What's up everyone? Alex J here from MusicMastermind.tv. Today we're going to talk about a very, very interesting subject that I've been wanting to put together for a long time. And it's 10 music production secrets that industry doesn't want you to know about. Or at least that big producers are not talking about often. Uh, this is... Uh, something that's very important, something that was key to my own development as a producer. As you can see, uh, I work at like the high-end commercial level. Uh, I, I, I do work with a lot of independent artists as well, uh, but I've grown from having a home studio, just like a lot of you are out there. Uh, check out this picture, pretty funny, uh, to this high-end level. I didn't, I didn't start out with a studio. I didn't start out with having all these tools. Uh, it was a progressive learning experience uh, that started when I was like 14. So I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, the reason I made this video is to kind of give you some, uh, some insight into my, my world of music production and what makes me do amazing music. And hopefully that can translate to you as well so you can apply it on your own journey and grow as a music producer. Okay, so I made a, a tangible 10 point list. Um, that can really help us uh, kind of move the needle in regards to your music production development, okay? So number one is, it's some DAWs just sound better, which is completely false, but we'll get to that. Uh, number two, you need lots of plugins to get a decent sound, which is also false, and we'll also talk about that. Number three, how to make your drums pop. Uh, I know drums is a, is a really important thing for everyone. Uh, it's the backbone of all of our productions. So I'm gonna talk a lot about how to make those drums pop and the things kind of like I do and the, the things I think about in order to get those drums to sound really big and punchy, yeah? Uh, both uh, live and program drums. Uh, the next point, uh, music theory and chord extraction, how important theory is in what we do. Um, number four, using the loops and drum samples. Um, which it's very, very important and a key to a lot of the, the big sound that you can find on, uh, on tracks nowadays. Uh, number five, songwriting formulas and why they suck. I'm gonna get a lot of heat for this, but that's my opinion. I'm gonna give you my reasoning why I think they suck. Number six, using templates to save time. I can't uh, stress the, how important this is, at least for me. Uh, number seven, analog synths versus virtual synths. How are they different? Number eight, you can get the pro sound at home myth, uh, which I'm, I, I'm also gonna get a lot of a lot of stuff from this, but bear bear with me, you know, we'll we'll get to it. Uh, number nine, the importance of mixing and mastering as a producer, and I'll give you a little bonus at the end of the video, which is basically my secret magic recording channel that speeds up my time tenfold. It's the reason how I'm able to work super fast, and uh, and I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. So I'm gonna share that with you at the end of the video. Okay, so let's go down the items in the list one by one, and hopefully everything will make sense. Okay, let's start with the first point. Some DAWs just sound better. Okay, that is completely and utterly false because what makes uh, a software or, or, or sound better or worse, it's not the software itself. Like, mind, all these companies, whether it's like FL Studio or Avid or, you know, Cubase, they, they all make incredible software that sounds really, really good. And uh, it's, it's a piece of software. But what makes everything sound better or worse is the conversion. You know, so you're, you know, if you don't know what a converter is, it's basically a device that translates analog to digital signals and then signals that are digital into the analog world again. Um, normally, if you have like a like an interface or a preamp that has some kind of USB connection or Thunderbolt, it's gonna have a converter. The quality of that conversion system is what's gonna make everything sound better. Uh, that's why when you go to like a high-end studio, you have like really, really, really good conversion. Um, the software itself, it doesn't really matter what you're using. Some people are like, oh man, like Logic sounds really, really good or Pro Tools is better than everything. Not really, they all sound really, really great. What's gonna matter is the conversion system. Yeah, so yeah, like look for that when you're like buying uh, your equipment and you're looking into investing into gear, always look for the conversion first because that what, that's what's gonna make uh, the, the most difference out of anything that you, that you purchase, okay? Um, number two, you need lots of plugins to get an amazing sound, which is completely false. Um, yeah, I think I personally use probably 15 to 20 plugins at max. Um, 
I did go through a phase where I was just like literally getting every plugin bundle I could just to like learn from stuff. Um, but believe me, there's no real value unless you sit down with every plugin and learn what it does uh, to the music. Uh, that's what really your focus should be on, especially at the beginning, is to learn uh, what each plugin does. If you see somebody using a cool plugin that you like, uh, download the demo version, try it out for a while on your own stuff. And if it really works and you understand what it's doing, then get it. Um, a lot of people want to find like cracked versions or like plugin bundles, which is, it's cool, but it's, first of all, it's not going to do anything unless you use them. And number two, you're not going to need that many plugins, you know, plus the fact that it's just completely legal. But, um, so start there, start by really harnessing the knowledge of what's going on behind the plugin and how is it affecting your music. Uh, you don't need a lot of them. Honestly, you can get away with like, you know, five to 10 plugins tops. Um, let's go to the next point, number three, how to make your drums pop, okay? This is super, super important. Uh, a lot of people struggle with this. Uh, I'm a drummer first, uh, so you have an idea. I've been producing music since I was 14, but I've been playing drums since I was like 12. Uh, so for a long time, I've had a real good awareness of, of this, the, the sound of the drum set, yeah? Which I think helped uh, when you're programming drums, when you're trying to record drums, because, um, you know, uh, Drums sound good because of several different factors. I'm gonna do a little outline here. The first one, which I think is the most important, is gain staging. So if you don't know what gain staging is, uh, I'll give you this practical ex example. Um, so let's say um, you open up like any drum sampler, right? It's gonna open the plugin, and let's say you drag in the samples, like a kick, snare, uh, toms, or whatever, okay? Every sample, it's gonna have a MIDI note attached to it. So the MIDI note is saying how loud and when the note is played so that the sampler knows and plays that sample at the desired volume. So there's a level there, like the MIDI note volume, you know, uh, from 0 to 127. So then after that, it's the channel itself has a volume within the plugin, which how you set it up, it's gonna make a difference. And then the plugin itself has a main kind of output or volume knob, which is also another level. And then that gets rounded into a mixer, which has several different instruments or vocals or whatever elements of your song. And that goes to a master bus. So all that stuff is important because how loud you're going in and out of things, it's gonna make a difference on the overall sound. Um, a little tip there, if you're using FL Studio, I know some of the older versions, I don't know if the newer versions, um, still start with this, but I know they have a limiter in the master bus. Uh, if you do uh, notice that you have it, just take it off uh, until you really get an idea of how all this stuff works. And if you want to slap it in later to, you know, make an artistic decision, then so be it, but don't start with it. Okay. So gain staging is huge. I mean, imagine like if you're playing, like when I'm playing drums, like real drums and I'm playing a groove, I don't play everything super loud. I, you know, I, I have a pretty good awareness of the levels of each piece of the drum set so I can adjust accordingly. You know, if I'm playing a backbeat groove, I'm gonna, you know, the kick is gonna be somewhat loud. Uh, I'm gonna be kind of like medium to medium loud on the snare. I'm gonna be loud on the rim shots, obviously. Uh, but the, the, you know, the, the ghost notes are not gonna be loud. They're gonna be like soft. So you can tell the difference. And then the hi-hat's not gonna be super loud. It's gonna be, you know, kind of like relative to all that stuff, a little quieter. So you hear everything in place, okay? So gain staging uh, and that level concept is super important. The second point we can talk about is transient design. I can't stress the fact of how important transient designers are. If you don't know what a transient designer is, it's basically this, this, this devices or plugins that you can have that uh, modify the attack and sustain of any sample or and so it's really good for drums I make everything either pop or just sustain more so they sound bigger or sharper depending on what you're trying to do so transit designers are like a huge thing uh, they can really make a difference uh, especially with drums they're like especially uh, especially good on drums uh, and the third thing that we can talk about is dynamics understanding compression understanding limiting how does it work? Because there's, again, just like leveling in dynamics, it works differently at different stages. Like, it, it, let's say, so if you're compressing, there's different things you need to think about as you're compressing. Because you could be compressing, like say the kick, right? Or you could be compressing the entire drum set or you can be compressing the entire track. So it's different levels of thinking when it comes to dynamics. So the first thing that I would do is really learn 
everything on every compressor possible, every knob, every function. I actually uh, have a Dynamics video that explains everything thoroughly that's gonna live inside musicmastermind.tv. So if you're a member, um, you know, you can, you're gonna be able to check it out in there in the next couple weeks. If you're not a member, like I highly, uh, you know, uh, suggest that you become a member. There's a lot of stuff, this stuff plus extended stuff that's really high end and, uh, and, and thorough. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really important. But going back to our point, dynamics is huge. You know, applying limiting to certain parts of the drum set or, you know, parallel compression on some stuff, it's, it really makes everything so much bigger and so much better, whether you're talking about samples uh, from an 808 kit or like a real drum set. Uh, dynamics is very, very important. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next point, music theory and chord extraction. Music theory is everything. Whether you play instruments or not, whether you, you're a musician or not, uh, a lot of you are going to be working from a laptop and maybe a controller. Uh, music theory is essential, man. I can't tell you how important uh, music theory is. Do you need to know like everything about music theory? No. Like you need to know the practical concepts of music theory enough where you can. So basically, the reason why we learn music theory is to be able to identify what you're hearing. You, it's more about ear training and identifying stuff. It, it's not that important that you play these things, but you can spell them out. So, you know, I, for a long time I went to music school, I'm a jazz drummer, but I also play piano and guitar and all these other instruments. Um, I spent a long time living with the piano and being getting familiar with uh, just the structure of chords. You know, so when you can hear something, you're like, ah, that's this chord, or, or that's an extension. So, and you don't need to get too fancy, uh, but you know, structure is important. So at least on, on a basic level, you can uh, tell what's a triad, what's a seventh chord, uh, and maybe some of the extensions, you know, like the ninth, the eleventh, but that stuff's gonna sound Chinese to you if you don't know it. Um, but honestly, uh, listen to me when I say this, like it's super important and it's gonna make you grow so much more as a producer. Uh, a practical example that's very important that when you're doing 808 work, let's say you're programming a bass line. So a lot, this happens to a lot of people, like they'll they'll do like this fire track, like this drums, right? They'll have this like keyboards or whatever, and then the moment the drum comes and it's like the bass hits, it sounds like crap, okay? Because it's not tuned, because it's maybe slightly detuned with the track, and you know, you know, we're going by ear, sometimes we might not catch it, but somebody that, you know, they can create tension, and you don't want that. You wanna, every decision that you make, it needs to be an emotional, musically, uh, musically emotional decision, yeah? It doesn't have to make sense theoretically to you in the beginning, but it has to sound uh, good in context. It doesn't matter if it's a weird note or something, but if, as long as it sounds good and you know what it is, then it's good. Um, so yeah, learning theory is something that that again, it's super important. I also have some content on that stuff that's gonna live inside Music Mastermind. Uh, just kind of like <laughs> music theory for producers, if you wanna call it, kind of like the essentials on, uh, on music theory. So yeah, if you haven't checked it out, please subscribe and uh, you'll, you'll get notifications on when that stuff launches. Um, and then another point adding to that music theory point is chord extraction. Um, I'm a big fan of chord extraction. I did it in the beginning, like I didn't know theory that well enough to navigate some, some of the stuff. I always went for the jazzy stuff and I liked it, but I didn't know what was going on chord-wise. So I would download like MIDI packs and stuff from uh, stuff like I, I could find online and kind of like extract it. But I did take the time though to, every time I saw something on the piano roll on the DAW, I always made a point to study like the chord and what was going on harmonically. So, you know, oh, it's a triad, but oh, it has a, a flat seven. Oh, that's a minor seventh chord. Oh, or maybe, oh, the sharp 11 or the sharp four. Oh, that's a Lydian chord. Stuff, it, everything will start to kind of click as the more you get into it. So chord extraction is cool. You know, if, if you get the chance, just download stuff and put it in the sequencer and then learn from it as well. I mean, uh, a lot of stuff that's out there, is, uh, like the, the stuff that we hear is kind of complex sometimes. Uh, so it's good to know what's going on, even on a basic level. It just makes you a lot better as a music producer. And it's the reason, you know, how I can do like really, really cool stuff. Okay, the next point, uh, using loops and drum samples. Yes, loops are super important. I completely encourage the use of loops. Um, Sometimes uh, we get fixated on the idea of like, oh, I should do this this way, or like formula, or I should do this plugin or whatever. There's no formula. So if you, if it, if it gets you to the finish line quicker, 
by any means, use it. So like if, if it's dragging a loop and then doing a beat around it and doing some basic harmony can get you to you know writing like an excited and you know about making the track then totally use loops i use loops all the time um, not only to write but to layer stuff sometimes it just there's another level of density when you add a loop behind like some drums or some patterns or just a loop on its own can bring a lot of value into your track so using loops is a big 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 yes at least for me yeah um i do a lot of layering using loops and drum samples are also essential. Every good producer that you like and that I like, uh, they have their own catered uh, drum samples that they like. It's basically when you're a producer, you, you're a taste maker. It's your taste versus somebody else. If we all get the same files, we're all gonna do different music. So that's why you have to kind of like shape your sound by studying other people and then obviously getting your own things that you like. You know, oh, I personally like fat like punchy snares uh when you're talking about like the hip-hop stuff i like like layering a lot of stuff together when i'm doing my snares like clap snares room shots and everything in like one kind of like big thing um so yeah i have my own uh taste when it comes to that stuff and i do have my own uh drum sample collection uh, that i know that i like and i go to uh, for different styles of music yeah so totally go and figure out your sound so and that's gonna take a long time like i i just got a lot of samples and again it's just kind of like the plug-in thing i bought a lot of stuff and i'm like well yeah i'm never gonna use this well this stuff doesn't really work and this stuff sounds really really good uh and i i'm gonna give you uh just a lot of information later on like the stuff that i like or kind of what i go for for different things in different videos so make sure you subscribe to the channel because i'm going to be talking about that stuff uh in the next couple of videos okay Let's move on to the next point. Songwriting formulas and why they suck. I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat for this. I know a lot of people like are really about like making the perfect song, like AABA or whatever, or the forms. Like when you're studying music or you're studying how to do this stuff, totally like study every formula, like try it out. But when it comes to music in general, the best music that you like and that I love it's completely organic and if you see the process of how I actually made it and how so I made some stuff in the studio as well, it's just organic. You know, you can't be thinking about formulas when you're, uh, it's, it's better that you focus on emotional connection and what that music is doing versus just like, oh no, it needs to be this or this. You, you should never put stuff in its place when you're, when you're thinking about creating you're creating it's creative it's basically you're allowing the moment to happen and you're putting all this cumulative knowledge organically into the process so songwriting formulas i think they suck i think so a lot of people fixate on that stuff and that's why all the music sounds the same a lot of people you know are making the same kind of music you know how how, how many tracks have you heard that sound just like unforgettable by french montana like it's ridiculous, okay? And this is uh, this is another a whole lot of another point. This needs to stop. I you know it's crazy. So don't use formulas. You know, it, think about think about this. What when you hear Timbaland or you hear Scott Storch or you hear any of the big time producers, what do you love about them? Their sound, whatever they were catered to. So yeah, it's it's super important. Okay, next point: using templates to save time. Um, this is like a magic element that a lot of people kind of like don't talk a lot about using templates is the best thing you can do don't make them on the spot like let's say if you're in a session and somebody's coming in to work with you oh like let's record like drums and like you're gonna go and then create a file from scratch and do all these things like channel per channel you should have that stuff already like done you know on your own time do templates for your stuff like i like you know I'll give you an example. A template I use all the time is a vocal recording template, and it's kind of tied to the bonus magic secret channel thing I'm gonna talk about later. Um, so anytime somebody comes in the studio and I need to record vocals, I open up this template that has all this information, all these channels at the ready to record. You know, the main, uh, several lead vocals, uh, background vocals, uh, whispers, uh, effect vocals, all this stuff is already built in, so when I literally, it's like plug and play, I, I load it, and I'm ready to go. I, there's no waiting time. Uh, the microphone's already set up. It's like super quick. Um, so yeah, use templates. Templates save you time and whatever helps you get to the finish line quicker, by any means, use it. So this is a big yes. Number seven, analog synths versus virtual synths. Are they any different? Um, you know, when you look at this stuff, uh, you gotta think about a couple of things. Analog synths, um, 
they are built to a really high standards. They have really high components. So yeah, they're gonna sound better than plugins. Why? Because it's really dependent on your hardware. Can you get a pretty good sound closer, better with the virtual synths or the VSTs? Of course. I mean, if I get any plugin, let's say Omnis here, and I run it through something like this, it's gonna sound amazing, just like this or better. So it's not so much about the, you know, the difference in what they do. Like if you get the virtual version of this, it's gonna sound as good. Uh, for some things, there may be things that you cannot do, that you can only do in, in like the actual synth, uh, like an analog synth like this one. Um, but yeah, you can get pretty close. Um, I would say the main difference between them when you're talking about, let's say, an analog sync like this, like look at this thing, it's a, a beautiful limited edition aluminum mini Moog Voyager, like you're you're buying a piece of history, you're buying legacy, you're buying uh, the sound, and the, the, the thing about analog synths synth are why they're so important to me is that they always sound good, I don't gotta think about anything. So if I'm in the studio, I can literally just put it down, plug it in, turn it up, and I'm there. Um, if I go live, play so to play, you know, live, the same thing. I just put it down, turn it up, turn it on, fire away. Uh, sometimes with a computer, it's not that easy to, to to start. You need to open up the software, like open up the computer, then load the software, the DAW, then load the plugin or whatever. It's a it's this process that sometimes it can kind of like kill the creativity a bit. So I like to have everything at the ready. The quicker I can get to like creative mode, uh, I'm gonna do it. So. I, I see the value in, in, in using analog synths. Uh, the only thing you have to have them is ready to record, but that's super easy to do once you get your setup going. And if, if you just have like a two channel preamp, you have it always hooked up there and you know, super quick. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love analog synths, and I, but I also use a lot of virtual synths just because of the, of the sounds, yeah? Uh, a big complaint for a lot of people that uh, see an analog synth like, well, well, why am I gonna spend so much money on an analog synth and then you know, I have to design the sounds from scratch and all this stuff, you know? The good thing about this company is they've wised up to that stuff and uh, for example, this Mini Moog has uh, like, templates for all the sounds so you can save your sound that you create onto a bank so you don't have to create it from scratch if you don't want to. You can always recall stuff and there's a lot of really, really, really good presets uh, that really work. So uh, a lot of the synths have that stuff. So yeah, it's it's barely any different. You know, like I said before, whether you choose virtual or analog synths, uh, they're all going to be good. Uh, they're going to help you create uh, better music. Okay, let's go to the next point that you can get it at you can get the pro sound at home myth. Uh, yeah, I would say the answer is no. Can you get super close? Of course, you can totally get close. Like I said before, like if you're if you have uh, like a really decent mic pre, you have a really good converter, and you have a, a a really good microphone, you can get pretty decent results if the room is good. If you if you're recording out of a closet and no acoustic treatment or it's like just super dry, you're gonna have to compensate a lot. Uh, but if you know what you're doing and you have a pretty decent room and you have the gear and the knowledge to apply uh, the concepts, you know. Yeah, you can get a pretty decent sound on the home. Can you get this sound? No, obviously that's why music studios exist. Because it's, you know, high-end gear comes with a price, not just because of the price is the components. Like, you know, you can do all the comparisons you want and there's some mics that get really close to like really expensive mics. But when you're talking on the top, 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 they're just different. They, the components are make it sound so much better that it, you can't really replicate that. Um, can you get away with a lot of the stuff? Yeah, you, of course you can. But if you're really discerning, like I'm super, super picky about the sound. I want to have the the best of the best when it comes to recording. Um, you know, I, I care a lot about what I can capture because once you capture it, then it's whatever. But on the capture process, you're gonna try to have the best signal and the best quality coming in. Um, so yeah, having good gear really helps. Another thing that's different on the studio is the the, the pro studio experience, uh, so to speak. So when you go to a studio like this one, okay, um, you're not only getting the gear, uh, the the room is acoustically treated and designed for the reproduction. Because a lot of the times when you're at the house, uh, and I, when I was at the house, I had this problem. Like I wanted to get like decent mixing skills or or just get better at everything, and just I 
couldn't get a good reference. When you go to a pro studio, you have several references of the same thing. You know, that's why you see like there's, I have a pair of NS10s, a pair of ATCs and the big ocean waves in the back, uh, not just to have speakers and like be flashy, but those are all meant for a purpose. Like each speaker represents a listening experience. So I'm trying to get the best across all formats. I'm trying to get it to sound good, whether it's in an Apple earbud or whether it's like a stadium, it has to sound good everywhere. So that's why you have so many speakers and you'll have them all in the pro studio. So in the studio, instead of checking your mixes 150 times, putting it in the car, you listen to it once or twice and that's it. It just sounds, however it sounds here, it sounds out there. So that's why you're paying like the price. And, and can you get that at home? Com no, you can't, totally can't. Um, but that being said, don't be discouraged. Of course, you can get super close and especially if you're doing stuff in the box, but you know, I would say if you want to try to get uh, to the next level, uh, whenever you're going to do mixing or mastering, uh, make sure you run it through analog uh, gear or you hire, uh, you work with a mixing engineer and a mastering engineer. I mean, it makes a, a huge difference. Plus, it's another set of ears that's working on your music and that's always a good thing. You know, sometimes we get caught up, like I know I did in the beginning, to wanting to do everything myself and uh, it was good, but I can never get the extra like, ah, like that when you hear like a big record, you're like, wow, what's that thing that sounds really, really good? How do they make that so explosive and so big? Obviously is knowledge and the gears you get from professionals. So yeah, as you're on this quest, try to really associate yourself with people who are really good um, to make your music sound better. Okay, and the last point, uh, the importance of mixing and mastering, kind of what we were talking a, a little bit ago. Um, I personally, I'm comfortable mixing my stuff because I've studied mixing for a long time. I do have the capability of, you know, high-end manipulation of uh, sound. Sometimes that might not be the case in your in in your house or your mobile studio because yeah, you, you need a good reference. So you need pretty serious monitors so they sound how they're gonna sound everywhere. Uh, the room plays a huge factor whether it's acoustically treated or not. A lot of people just throwing stuff up like I did, uh, and that's I, I couldn't get. <laughs> I could get a decent sound, but I can never get this sound. Um, and then, you know, it's it's a matter of like you're biased and you're listening to this stuff for a long time. It's good to have another set of ears kind of like tell you, um, you know, listen to this. Or if you don't like it, then you, you can tweak it. But it's also good to have another reference. So mixing with others, uh, it's really, really great. Um, I would say if you want to mix it yourself, just make sure you know what you're doing. And that takes years of experience. You can't just learn mixing and like looking at a tutorial online. Like you need to spend time. I've spent so much time, years, mixing stuff that like really sucked, that was good. Everything in between, basically everything. I just I just put myself in there. Like just really working at it for years until I got a pretty decent idea of what to do and how to get to it quicker. You know, I used to take like nine hours to mix a track. Now and then I went to four. Now I can mix a song in three hours because I really, really, really know what I'm doing. And it's this is regardless of how many tracks, if it's like 60 tracks or it's like 40 tracks or 10 tracks, it doesn't matter. But I spent a lot of time mixing stuff so I can complement my production with the mixing. Um, mastering is something that I never do. I always love to work with, with mastering engineers uh, just because Again, it's another set of ears. They have a critical listening reference in their space and they can do a lot of stuff to their track. You'd be surprised, you know, how much it can change. It's like, imagine also mixing is a level blend and creative infusion of all the things within the track. Mastering is just the same, but for the entire track. So if you limit something or you, let's say you compress like the bass and like, play with the stereo spectrum, like it's gonna make a huge difference and that's their world. They really know how to do that stuff. Uh, I don't, I try not to dive too much into it. Like if, if the project has no no budget whatsoever, like I'll do like a pseudo mastering on Isotope, but really I'd rather work with a mastering engineer uh, and, and they're really not that expensive. They're really, really good to work with. So yeah, I highly suggest that you work with a mastering engineer that's a professional one. Okay, so those are the 10 points. Uh, I'm gonna give you that secret bonus I was talking about, uh, which also I'm gonna have an entire video thoroughly explaining this stuff inside of Music Mastermind. So if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave the link below so you can check out on the website, but uh, here it is. So my secret magic recording channel is the key channel, okay? What is it? Basically, it's a channel that you have in, I have it in my template and in every session that I do vocals uh, for. Um, that's basically always recording. 
right? This track is always recording, has no processing, no chain, whatever. And that track, I use it to record and, and I drag the audio file down to this chain that has all this stuff already built into it, like bus, uh, effects, dynamics, uh, auto-tune, all this stuff that makes the vocal sound like ready uh, into it. So as I'm recording, I'm dragging and editing. So in the end, you, when you hear the track back, it just sounds really, really good. You have to do no editing, maybe move stuff if you want to, because I'll also give you tips on how to edit on the fly as you're recording. So the whole point of this is by the end of the session, you can get a finished product or something close to a finished product. Uh, and that's really gonna make a huge difference. People are gonna praise you for it. Uh, that literally speeds up the whole process 10 times, but you gotta get organized and you gotta set it up right. So if you're interested in that stuff, Again, I'm gonna do a video further down the line that explains everything. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to the notifications so when it comes out, then you can, you can get it as well. That's it for now. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot more questions and we're gonna get right to them. If you have any more questions, write them down in the comments below. I'm gonna be reading everything. I read a, a lot of your comments. And um, yeah, if they're interesting, I'm gonna put together a video for you. So, but for now, that's it. I'm Alex J from musicmastermind.tv. See you in the next video.